So Corey, what did you think of this week's episode of Gotham? I definitely thought it was one of the uh, better episodes, if not. Oh, did you? Fucking bitch. So Corey, what did you think of this week's episode of Gotham? I definitely thought it was one of the better episodes, uh, if not probably the best one of the season so far. Mm -hmm. um, it had a lot of elements going in it. You had the introduction of a fairly well-known character, Zaz. You had Jim Gordon on the run from everybody, pretty much everyone, and it's something that it easily diluted into like a cat and mouse chase or just like Mm -hmm. It could have easily just got lost in all the chaos and action, but I felt like they kept it very focused, uh -huh. and um, the storyline played out in a very satisfying way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely think they kept it from getting uh, muddied, and that was important. Um, they seems like all of the little like chapters that they opened, or all the little like problems that like were opened in the past episodes, got tied up for the most part, you know, and every problem was handled in a good amount of time, you know? Like, they didn't, like, uh, bring up and then kill off a topic super fast, like, they gave it, it's the amount of time that I think the, the, the problems deserved to make them seem more important, you know? So. I, I liked the, uh, intensity of the episode. Uh, Definitely. I felt like Jim Gordon was in real danger, even though we knew he would make it out alive. It felt like his life was in actual peril. Uh, I mean, he had, he gets shot, he gets wounded, so he made it out alive. He just he didn't make it out intact entirely, and it was cool that the series wasn't afraid to wound their protagonist because a lot of shows. The hero is untouchable. But they don't make him look weak. Yeah, it, it, they, this show is not afraid to fuck Jim Gordon up, and that's kind of and in the butt. That's kind of essential to the character is that he keeps putting the city is constantly putting him through trials mm -hmm. and testing him to be the cop that everyone else is versus the cop that he wants to be. And you can see that the city broke, like Harvey, that he used to be a good cop, but mm -hmm. it, it broke him. Um, so I, I think this episode did a really good job of playing up the intensity and the danger that Gordon is facing. Yeah, definitely. Um, I also like the portrayal of uh, Zaz a lot. I thought that it was a really, um, they took a really, nice approach to that character you know what I mean it was a nice portrayal of him yeah it, it was interesting to see him compared to like the Arkham City where he's just psychotic and just like in a straight jacket literally mm -hmm. um it's weird to see him like in a suit and so like put together conducted which almost made him even more terrifying when he did cut the tally mark into his arms and it's just like oh there's something deeply unhinged in him mm -hmm. which is almost scarier than like what you think a crazy person is yeah definitely definitely um but yeah i i liked the portrayal of him uh, i think they got across the fact that he's intimidating uh well enough um i'm glad that they're finding characters that they can uh use as the characters that right. they are and not the characters they're supposed to become. Mm -hmm. And we were discussing how it'd be great if they had like Black Mask in there that he's one that they could do now. Uh, and there's a couple of others I think like the ben the Ventriloquist they could do. Yeah. Um, so I think if they take like these B ray or just like the lower unknown characters and allow them to be threats to the GCPD, but not Gotham-wide threats, mm -hmm. then I think you can allow the heroes to flourish without Batman. No, definitely. Definitely, and that's what they need. You know what I mean? Like, they need a little bit more grounded mm -hmm. characters. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I was just going to ask you how long do you think until we see Black Mask? Probably, like, a couple... I bet we have, like, another season or two, but... I think... We might be introduced him to him without the mask 
as soon as one of the three tiers, either Moroni, Falcone, or Fisher, if one of them goes down, and then the other two find peace or whatever, and they're after that, we're going to start to see the rise of Black Mask, and he's going to be another third power to kind of fill up that space. Well, what is, uh, do you know off the top of your head what Black Mask's name is, actually? Because is that, I wonder, is that the dude with the accent that Fish is having a relationship with? Uh, I, let me Google it real quick. So that's a spoiler, or a Easter egg that we both missed out on, it's... That would answer our question that we have right now. I know that they could do a really cool scene where he wears the mask and then it burns into his face. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just happy that we aren't recording this for a show because this would be embarrassing. Oh yeah, right. This is what we're doing. Good thing it's not a show. Roman Synosis okay. or Jeremiah Arkham. Okay, and what is the that guy's name with the accent on. Well, fuck no. I'm, you know, do research before the show. What show? Before we have conversations. Yeah. Without cameras. Um. You know what? I'm gonna look at the IMDb, and if there's no one by the Roman name, then I'm just gonna assume they haven't introduced them yet. Sounds good? Sounds good to me. I'm just happy this isn't a show. I think you'd be delighted to know that it Gotham has an 8.2 on uh, IMDb. IMDb. Apparently, the Edward Nygma character is the highest paid character on the show. Really? Yeah. And he's the most annoying. His name's Corey. Fuck you. Followed by uh, Jim Gordon and Harvey Bullock. Okay. I Look. figured that that Harvey guy would be the most because he's been around the longest. But... Mm. Then Bruce Wayne gets paid more than uh, Alfred, Oswald, Barbara, and any of them gets paid. Jada Plinkett Smith is like low on the list. That is a, that or right there surprising. Okay. I used to do this shit at school, like in elementary. I would dot a dots. Oh yeah, get my fingers like this, and my mom would get freaked out. Get henna tattoos. That's cool. She would be like, people in prison do things like that. I'm just like, well, looks like I'm going to prison. Right now. Just tell her you're trying to follow your dad's footsteps. Yeah. And then my dad comes bursting through the door because he's Hulk Hogan. I'm just having this whole conversation isn't being recorded right now. <laughs> you know, I, don't I mean, see. I guess if it was, it could just be edited out, but. Yeah. You know, I don't see anyone with the same one here. Okay, so. Uh, I guess I'll just ask Apparently, that. there's a guy with that beard in the show. That is a beard. Oh, that's not exciting. That's the guy with the accent. Is that him? Yeah. Oh, well, I'm glad I inadvertently found it. Well, did you hear that um, Netflix is adapting a series of unfortunate events? Really? Mm -hmm. Did you hear that I don't care? No. <laughs> I don't care. That's cool. I thought it was cool. They filmed 21 episodes so far. I thought you'd be interested. Not four series of fortune events for this. Is Jim Carrey going to be in it? Fuck no. You think they're going to let him near that series again? And Jim Carrey doesn't do sequels except for Ace Ventura and Dumb and Dumber. Yeah. He said that so many times. He's like, I do not do sequels. What about Ace Ventura? What about Dumb and Dumber? What about... What about me, myself, and Irene, too? <laughs> okay, cool. So, anything else on the Gotham? 
Sorry? How did you feel about the uh, ending reveal that the Penguin had made a deal with uh, uh, Fox Hunt? Yeah. Uh, I thought it was really cool. Uh, it just adds more depth to the Penguin character, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but it it it's so it like it does what it's supposed to do in the sense that I'm just like, okay, what side is he really on? You know what I mean? I mean, ultimately, I know it's just his he's own. on his side. Yeah, he's he's trying to get all of them to eliminate each other so he can uh, eventually take power. But it makes you interest. Interested, like what? What is what damage is going to be done based yeah. off of like? I think we'll uh, ultimately. I think that Valcon and Maroni are both of them will find out that he's playing both sides, and then because they've shown that he's kind of like a family, like oriented guy like the penguin is kind mm -hmm. of you know I think they'll get to his man yeah wow. so uh, what would you rate uh, I would give Gotham a, a 9 out of 10 honestly I thought it was that good mm -hmm. I'd be right around there uh, alright so what did you think of the flash I think uh, they really should have had an episode of it this yeah. week but what about uh, Arrow Arrow I don't know why I'm just having like weird hesitation with it this season. It's not like capturing me. I it it almost feels like the uh, what engrossed me about the series in the beginning has kind of worn off. So now mm -hmm. the sillier moments and the more uh, not as tightly written and performed moments saying a lot more to me. That being said, Arrow's still a really good show. Mm -hmm. I felt like it was definitely a filler episode. Um, it added some, like, obviously, like, the whole episode it added background to Felicity, but honestly, like, I could have really done without it. Like, it, it made... It, it, it'll, it'll probably have a... It might have a bigger effect in the end at the end of the season, but it just, it was so just like... It was background that they introduced and sealed off at the end of the episode. Yeah, and it was just like, it just didn't, it was just like Z-list villain, you know what I mean? It's just like, and they didn't even give him like a good, decent backstory, or they didn't give him like real motive. It wasn't like, oh, I saw you with somebody or whatever when I got out. Like, it, they didn't say anything. They're just like, he's like, oh, you sold out. Like... Yeah, it was literally, it was just so like, what? Like, it, it didn't, like, and maybe that's what they wanted. Maybe they wanted you to be like, what the fuck? Like, but apparently, if you get locked away for life, for hacking or whatever, as long as you work for the government for five years, mind you, five years, he worked for them for five years as opposed to the life sentence. Like, I just, I don't know. I That part didn't make sense. The only... I mean, the best part about the episode, obviously, was the end. You know what I mean? Like, the last, like, minute of the episode was mm -hmm. what made the whole episode worth it. Yeah. How do you feel about the prospect of Roy killing Sarah? Uh, it's funny because we called it. You know, it was, like, main, like when we called like when we called it, it was mainly a joke. But, like, we did say, like, what if it's revealed that Roy is the one that killed her? And then... It, Come and find out it is, you know. You should, uh, you should do it. Take out that little section of the video, put a timestamp, a date stamp on it, and then oh, I love that. Yeah, no, I just think it is funny that we called it, but uh, not to my own horn, but uh, do you think he actually did, or do you think it's just a fever um, dream? I don't know at this point, you know. Uh, there's a part of me that doesn't really think so, you know, I think that it's a little too, it just doesn't add up as much, you know, but, um, maybe, you know what I mean? It's, it's so, like, I'm so on the fence about that one, whether... I, I don't remember, I feel like we kind of had to watch 
that last sequence of the first episode again to kind of see where Roy went and what Roy was doing during yeah that battle because I don't even re- I don't remember him being there at all I remember it being Oliver and then Sarah shows up and they're on the roof and they start fighting Oliver goes away for some reason she has a heart to heart with her sister she leaves and she gets hit with the arrows uh uh-huh. Yeah, it, I mean, maybe, you know, like... Maybe there's a little teaser in there, but... Maybe it, like, maybe it's as simple as, like, you know, they're like, no, we are telling you, like, he did it, or... But I don't think it's that simple. I think there's a lot more to it. Because they present it as a dream, as, like, Yeah, a exactly. Exactly. I don't know. I don't know. I'm anxious to see where that goes. He... So, there's two ways it could go. He's obviously... Uh, still dealing with side effects from the Maracuru. Is that giving him either A, is that giving him hallucinations, or B, it's making him rage, rage out. out subconsciously. And the Maracuru has done both, so it's just like, which one is it? You know? And if it, or it could be both, you know what I mean? Like, he could have hallucinated and, like, not seen that it was her, like, when he was having the vision, or, like, the hallucination. It could have been some, I don't know. I'm really, I really wonder what they're going to do. Like, at this point, they could just kill off the Roy character, as far as I'm well, concerned, because, like, they don't, like, do anything with him anyway. I think this is the most exciting part of this season, because it's the first prospect that Roy is actually going to have, like, a storyline or some sort of arc besides missing Thea. Besides being in the background. Because he just... The season starts out with him as a Red Arrow, which is really cool, which is what we've wanted all through season two. But it sort of feels like it might have been more interesting if we got to see the training, if we got to see a mm-hmm. little bit of the process. If he wasn't there yet. Because now he's just Red Arrow and was there for him to do yeah but with how this show works you know you're gonna get the background of that like you know what i mean like it'll probably happen next season where we yeah. get or maybe not i guess if they have his storyline going that we'll get it next episode or something this show does a really good job of kind of giving like what the fuck like type things that feel like they're mistakes or just kind of like lazy answers and then justifying it later yeah it's really good at it. having a plan or maybe it is important, or you know, just bullshitting their way out of mm-hmm. tricky situations. Yeah, but again, that was what made the episode worth it for me. Yeah. Anyway, the rest of the episode was just yeah, like but uh, hack yourself's cool. The stuff with her mom, I didn't care. I didn't like her mom. No, no, and I it felt too silly. And there was a part I swear that they filmed it and like. When they finished editing it, I swear they mixed two scenes up. The scene where the mom goes to the office building and then they're having that heart to heart and then she leaves. And I think that was supposed to come after Felicity is at the um, like actual like the cave or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like it because like at that part she's like I don't want to talk to her or whatever. You know what I mean? And it would make way more sense for her to have that attitude, like, before they have that heart-to-heart, before, like, she breaks down. Like, I figured that was, like, the point where I was like, okay, like, she's going to leave, and then Fliss is going to chase her home. You know what I mean? But it's just, like, it, to me, like, and if you, you know what things I'm talking about? Like, if you watch, like, I was going to say when we were watching it to, like, see if you felt the same way, but to me, it just felt like those scenes were backwards. The most interesting part about her mother is that they're so cryptic about who Felicity's dad is. Mm-hmm. That's the most interesting part, is that they hint at him, but they don't say who he is, which obviously means that the producers are holding him back to reveal. Who He's a bigger deal. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then Diggle was there doing... With his baby. What did he do? With what did he do in this episode? Baby Sarah. He was just awkward. The whole episode is awkward. Yeah, it's so they could do a babysitting joke when he shows up to the cave and he's just like, mm-hmm, baby. That's it. So that's that was the whole big wall. Like, yeah. He, I, I want to go back now and watch the episode and like count the amount of words that he says. I swear it's not more than 20. 
Hey, it's more than one. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> oh, what do you mean besides that? I've been sleeping much. That's it. Yeah, I don't know, but... Uh, what did you think about Constantine last week, though? Oh, before we go. Uh, what kind of rating would you give Arrow? Um, this episode was a lot better than last week. I would probably put in like the 7. Uh, 7.5. I would... For me, it was a little less slack. I don't know. It was lacking just as much as the last episode, so I would probably give it a six. I give it props for uh, trying to switch up the flashbacks, trying to switch up the focus on the character. Give it props for that, but at the same time, it did feel like a lot of filler. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I love the show, but I mean, yeah, there's that. It definitely this episode just. It's kind of boring, you know what I mean? Just like, not a whole lot stands out. Yeah. Felicity looked hot in her instant goth kit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Instant goth. Yeah. I'm not goth, I'm vamp. <laughs> um, so Constantine? Constantine. What did you think of Constantine last week? You know, the character of Constantine just increasingly, like, the more I watch him, the more I like Like, I you instantly liked him from the beginning. There's the scene where he goes to the uh, the morning party where like all the guests the wake yeah the wake he goes to the wake and he brings a frozen TV dinner yeah and to him dressing up is just taking his uh, his trench coat off so he just has a tie that he didn't even put yeah. up comes in with the frozen TV dinner just throws it on the table <laughs> yeah uh, I, it's cool because like. I am starting to like that character more. Like when we went, like going into that show, like I, I think you were a lot more stoked for that character than I was because I was just kind of like, yeah, it's cool, you know. But like, this episode has definitely made me a bigger fan of that character. Um, I didn't think that we were gonna get a reveal as to who the girl was with the paintings of him so yeah. fast. Like I figured I was like that is gonna be finale, no. series finale. If anything, I was like we are not gonna know who the hell that well, is. She was yeah. introduced as she's a new psychic, so yeah, to replace that. Yeah, her scene was thrown into the first episode, mm -hmm. but it was cool. Um, I definitely uh, felt more from the character, and I liked that girl a hell of a lot more than the girl from the first episode. You know, yeah, even though this episode had a very big uh, monster of the week vibe, it was a very unserialized. No, totally. Out of shows that have like the uh, non-story episodes, this is by far my favorite to watch because he's just so entertaining and mm -hmm. I love how he handles, he has such a personality that the way Definitely. he handles stuff, like he's not charming at all, he's an asshole. Oh, yeah, I like, uh, the reason I like this show is because it has a very, like older like Buffy the Vampire Slayer like angel theme and feel to them mm -hmm. you know what I mean it's a little I don't want to say campy you know but I don't think campy is the word but it's just it just has that old like late 90s early 2000s TV show feel you know the coolest part about this episode for me uh you might have not caught it but when he goes into her like apartment and there's all the paintings everywhere. Right behind her is the cover of Hellblazer number one. I did. Yeah, that. it's big, it's the only poster that's in color, and it's uh, the front cover to the very first appearance of Constantine. Really? Yeah, and it's just right center and to left of it. They have the first like three comic panels mm -hmm. of that issue. Mm -hmm. That. That was really cool because that was one like visual Easter egg that was just like, yes. Yeah. I, I, are you, I'm really excited for the uh, the Swamp Thing to mm. make an appearance. I'm really excited to see that character. These are two like very, out of the DC lineup, you can throw all, you can, for the most part, just kind of throw a net and put all the characters in a movie together and they'll fit. Swamp Thing and Constantine are the outcasts. Yeah. They're the two, like, just weird, they don't play together with anyone. Yeah. Well, that's why, that's how, when I try to explain this show to people, like, when I'm like, you should watch Constantine because I'm like, 
yes, it's a DC Comics show, but it doesn't feel anything like Arrow, anything like Gotham, anything like The Flash. Like, it's not, it doesn't feel like a comic book show. That's, and I, I tell you, I'm like, if you liked Buffy, if you liked those kinds of shows, then you'll like this show. It doesn't feel like an actual, it just happens to be by DC Comics for me. Anyway, it doesn't feel like a superhero show. And then... There's one scene in this episode which made me happy. He walks into uh, his hotel room and she's in there. Mm-hmm. And he puts a cigarette in his oh, mouth I, and he's <laughs> about to light it. And then she stops him and he like throws it out. Yeah, I saw when I the minute I saw him start to do that, I was like, oh, Corey's gonna like pop all over this. <laughs> Never been so excited to see someone to smoke. <laughs> I do not me condone either. it. I don't <laughs> condone it at all. But. Me either. <laughs> Except for his character. It makes me so happy. Yeah. Well, it's just them, like, nodding to the fact mm. that it's like... And there's a few scenes uh, from, like, where you see, like, a side profile and you can see, like, smoke. It's just very faint smoke. And then you see him twist his leg like he's putting the butt out. Yeah. I think that that's... I could assume, I only assume that that's probably just like the actor being like, I would, I don't want to smoke, which is cool. You know what I mean? Or if they're just like, we're just, we're going to wait to show this. No, for like a big deal. From From my understanding, it's like, that's the most they can show. That's how they can show it. Oh, really? Like they can't show him smoking. That's weird. Does it, is that, is that a new thing? Cause like, I know that they can't show people like drinking alcohol on like TV and stuff. I wonder if that like falls under like the same. I'm yeah, assuming my I can't, and, well, I assume it's because he's supposed to be a hero or a protagonist, like he can't smoke. Because mm-hmm. he's the hero, technically, of the show, even though he's a terrible person. Uh, whereas, if it was like a villain or some sort of situation like that, then I think they can smoke. It's just if it's depicted as maybe heroic or like... Yeah, that makes sense too. That makes a lot of sense. It's how it's depicted. So I, I'm glad that they're finding ways of saying like he does smoke. You just don't see it. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure you'll see it in the when they release the seasons on DVD and stuff like that. You know what I mean? It's yeah, like, you, you probably will. Maybe not though. Maybe not. Maybe they don't give a shit. How do you feel about like the uh, the monster of the week? How do you feel like was it memorable? Okay. No, no. Very just okay. Uh, no, no real fight at all, just him, like, it, very lackluster, monster-wise, don't really, did it, didn't care about the monster, we'll forget about it next week, probably. I thought there was some cool, like, deaths, like, the tar in the shower scene was cool, where it, like, yeah. lights him on fire, and then when the, uh, the truck starts filling up with tar, yeah. I thought that was really cool. Yeah, it was um, cool, it was but just the monster kind of- itself. Or the, de- the demons themselves, yeah. It's boring. Yeah, or not boring, just like forgettable. Yeah. The the things that the demon does are cool, but like. And I think that's gonna be a theme with the show because I kind of felt about the premiere episode is like the monster isn't what it's important; it's how he goes about fighting it. Yeah. Is the focus of the show how he goes about and the teaser for next week. They introduce uh, Club Midnight and Mr. Midnight, so they're getting there. It feels like that's the first episode to really dive into the comic book mythology and the characters. Mm-hmm. Captain Midnight? No, it's not Captain. Doctor Midnight. It's not Doctor Midnight. <laughs> it's a uh, Mr. Midnight. So, what would you give? Um, what would you give the rating? Costing, um this sort of felt like, you can say it, it was like a pilot, a co-pilot. A re- yeah. Because it sort of, it, they had to reboot the uh, side character. Yeah, it definitely felt like a reboot. Like, a, Which, I think it would have been fine as the first episode. I think it's fine as the second episode. Like, they did in a way that I didn't feel like he was rehashing a lot of information. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it had the benefit of not having to set up his character as much as Again, the first yeah, episode. Yeah. So I thought the pacing was great. I thought his portrayal of the character was awesome. The supernatural element, the villain itself, 
wasn't that memorable, but I felt like the set pieces used with it were really well done. I'd probably give it close to like an 8 or an 8.5. Uh, yeah, I thought it was definitely, I thought it was better than Arrow, uh, but I thought, I think it was right up there with Gotham. I would give it an 8.5, 8.5. Yeah. I don't think it was, I thought Gotham was that much better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but maybe it could just be because Gotham's in its like fourth. Episode. Yeah, definitely. So they have. No, uh, I think Gotham's further than that. But Goth yeah. Gotham's uh, more established. Than the yeah, world, definitely, probably. definitely. But I mean, it's saying something for Arrow because Arrow's in its third it, season. Yeah, you know, and so. it's saying something for Constantine for its second episode. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So I think that the order of the shows goes. Arrow, Constantine, Gotham, and then Flash is way up there. Oh, yeah. I would give Flash a 10 out of 10. <laughs> it, Flash turns a 10 this week if it didn't even show an episode. Actually, you know, I would even put Flash off the charts because it didn't show an episode. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, bring back the Flash. Bring back the Flash. Bring back the streak. The blur. The blur. Is that what they're going with? The blur or the streak? No, the streak, because uh, Smallville used the blur. blue blur, so they can't. Fuck you, Smallville. Fuck you. Kind of. They had a Flash character on Smallville. And an arrow. Yeah. And a blue beetle. They put a, like... I kind of want to watch this show now because, like, no, like the more like I hear about it, I'm just like, damn, that character's in there. Damn, that character's in there. Hawkman's in it. Martian Manhunter's in it for a whole season. Doomsday's in it. Uh, Brainiac is played by Spike from Buffy the Vampire Series. Really? Yeah, Brainiac's played by Spike. No, yeah, he also played Piccolo. So <laughs> let that sink in. In Dragon Ball Evolution. Yep. Played Piccolo. I can see in the cheekbones. It's <laughs> Google it. It's him. <laughs> Jeez. It's an so, accent. That yeah. Turns you off. So, um, I think that's going to do it for this week in DC. Do you have anything else? No. Yeah. What about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? Got it. What? 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 Look at, your, look at yourself. What? 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 Oh my god, he fucking died from how dumb chill fucking ass dead. Oh my god.